There are epic stories of survival that take place under our very noses every day, many in caves just like this. Inside this cave are bats that have a foreign fungus growing all over them. It makes them weak and they're dying. So here's what we know about it so far. Sometime around 2005, we think somebody who had just visited a cave in Europe picked up spores of a fungus known commonly by researchers as P.D. It's a cold-loving species that grows in dark caves. We think these travelers then visited a cave in central New York. The spores either fell off their shoes or some of their gear. It started growing on the cave walls and quickly infected some of the local bats. The fungus appeared white and was prominent on their noses and wings. In fact, it was extremely devastating to the bats and it quickly spread. In 2006, it was here, just in central New York. Then each year it popped up in other places. In 2016, it jumped coasts and was detected in Washington state. In the last decade, it's killed an estimated 5.7 million bats. Now I'm trying to figure out what researchers are doing to understand the disease. And to help me with that, I'm meeting up with some researchers at Clemson University. I'm looking for Lotsky Hall. Lotsky? Lo yeah. So if you go up. I'm looking for Susan. How are you doing? Good. Pallavi, Siraj, ah. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? This is Pallavi. She has a small setup in the mountains at a place called Stump House Tunnel. And the first order of operation is to make sure we're not going to transfer the disease. That means doning protective Tyvek suits. Once suited up, we can enter the cave. And this particular bat dwelling isn't a natural cave. It was originally blasted away to become a tunnel in the 1800s. It was never finished though. Far back in this tunnel, there's a blocked off entrance. You see, they don't want the general public trekking all the way into this cave. Not only is it more treacherous, but it could easily spread the disease. Pallavi and Susan want to find out what's happening to these bats. Three years ago, they found 321 bats in this tunnel. And today, only 34. And many of those have the fungus. Here's what scientists know. First, not all bats are affected equally. In fact, there are seven bat species diagnosed with white nose syndrome that seem to be the hardest hit. Many of these could go extinct altogether if we don't figure out what's going on. Five other bat species have been found to have the fungus, but don't seem to show symptoms of the disease. And it's possible they may actually be resistant. To help understand what's going on, Pallavi is attaching temperature sensitive radio transmitters to the bats. It'll measure both their body temperature and how long they're awake. She'll compare her findings to bats without the disease. The hope is that this will help us inform our management decisions for these bats. All these bats are just being destroyed by this white nose syndrome. And everything I'm learning about these bats seems so doom and gloom. Researchers are afraid that we may lose entire bat species. Plus, bats in general are really important for us. They pollinate flowers, they move seeds, they eat tons and tons of insects. In fact, in a recent study, scientists put the beneficial price tag of bats in the US at $22.7 billion. Losing even a fraction of them would cost us a lot of money, such as, say, the extra treatments of pesticides we'd have to do to make up for all the insects that aren't eaten by the bats. But what's the solution, and is there even one? To help me out with this, I called up Dan Wilson of the U.S. Forest Service, who just so happens to be developing an early detection device. So if we can detect it very early, in this case with an electronic nose device that we're developing, then we can say, well, this bat is infected even way before symptoms develop, and then we can go in with treatments. Dan tells me that the enos they're developing is based on the fact that every bat species has a unique smell that changes when they get PD. So to develop this ultimate non-invasive technique to detect the disease, the team, led by Anna Doty, is heading into the field to figure out the unique smell of as many bat species as they can. And that's done via setup like this. Essentially, non-invasively pulling the air that now has a unique smell from around the bats into another bag in this pelican case to be analyzed later. And we remove the bat and release it into the wild. So in the end, we still don't have a way to stop this disease. It is spreading. Right now, it's here. 
Where will it be next year or in five years? Scientists are racing to figure out everything they can about this disease and are working to help mitigate the problem. Because it's not just the bats that this affects. It's our forests, our ecosystems, and our ability to use these habitats for our own way of life. So thank you to everyone who's put time into caring for our bats and dedicated their work to solving this problem. And who knows, hopefully someday we'll find a cure. Thanks for watching everybody. Now I try to give positives in every story that I do and I will say this one was particularly hard because I don't know if there is a silver lining here. I mean at least people are working on it. But stay tuned for more eco stories and maybe give me a suggestion in the comments as to something I can explore next.